friends. It's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman and Paige is back. How are you doing, Paige? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing all right. Uh, we're going to talk about something uh, a little more lighthearted uh, today, uh, a lot better. Let's talk about friends. What do you think? Oh, uh, yeah, that'll be a lot better. A little bit less doom and gloom than what we've been doing. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so, so friends are are a gift from God. Uh, it, it's it's one of those those truly blessed things in this world that 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 you realize how important it is, especially when you have one that that you can depend on, or when you realize you wish you did. Uh, so, let's talk a little bit about you know just even what a friend is, what a friend isn't, and, and you know where to where to go with this. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's good because I think a lot of people when they think about friends, they think that it's like oh this certain friend is my therapist friend. Like I go and I dump all my stuff on them. It's like, that's, that's not a friend then that's a therapist. So it's, like, where... I, yeah, you can have a friend that you talk about really important things with, but like, unless your friend uh, went to some good higher education there, like you're, what you're doing is you're setting your friend up to fail you. You know what I mean? Like they, they can't. And in the same, like I have, I have friends, but if I need brain surgery, I'm not going to go to them for that either. I, I want to go to a surgeon and I want them to, to sort of like, you know, be there to, to make fun of me as, as we go through the process so that I can think about it being okay. Yeah. It's more like friends are there for like to give joy and kind of, you know, help you through your struggles and maybe they do make fun of you but it's all like that's that's what they're there for they're there to help you because you know even if they make fun of you they've got your best interests at heart or they should if they're truly your friend right so when uh when we as lutherans kind of learn about these things um our, our our catechism is helpful because it sort of pairs things up in in sort of a giving vocation and a receiving vocation so you have you know parent and child pastor and congregation government a, a, and citizen uh but friend you have two people who are there as equals a, and it's a gift because you are there as as equals that means you get to give to each other and receive from each other um and sort of from this then you, you talked about sort of like we uh, we get to make fun of each other but also that's that's not just what a friend is because that that's also what a bully is so when mm -hmm. how do we just sort of distinguish between like how come when my friends make fun of me it, it's one thing but there's there's also places where I just I don't want that well when your friend is making fun of you like you you know that they have your best interests at heart they would do anything for you they're there with you through whatever you're going through because mm -hmm. they care for you and they love you and um that's just kind of when a bully does it they're there to tear you down and leave you in the dust like they're not there to pick you up again and like go through it with you they're just there to make it worse i guess right so I, and then this is one of those things and because if you sort of talk about you know what a friend is to somebody who has no idea about the concept and then you watch how you know like real close friends treat each other it can vary wildly like i have friends that that yeah we we make fun of each other a lot and i have friends that we we only really say kind things to each other and the the measurement isn't so much in that but but for christians um our, our friends are, are the people who uh who are willing to have compassion and forgiveness for us and who are willing to receive the same uh that that's what a friend is it, it's somebody that that has compassion and, and forgiveness it, it's exercising of of christian love essentially yeah and um i know we were talking a little bit about this but it's kind of that um paul's analogy of the body of christ like mm -hmm. we're we're all here and we're knit together in the body of Christ and because we can't do this alone like we need friends and so that just makes it a whole lot easier like for us when we're going we know that we're not going at it alone we're all brothers and sisters in Christ right and it sort of changes what the situation looks like because it's this word compassion compassion means to suffer with like that's that's the definition of the word i have friends who are willing to suffer with me and even for me um they, they don't need to be my jesus they don't need to be my parent they don't need to be my therapist but if they're going to be in this world with me then they're going to be alongside me in it um this is the body of christ analogy like we're down here together and so we're going to we're going to walk together because we need all of us um, but at the same time, the other side of the coin gets to be um, a, a real blessing because that means that if you are baptized, you are a part of the body of Christ. It, it means that even when you sort of like you look around and you feel lonely, you have friends simply by being a part of the church. And, and we, we want to sort of measure our friendship then in our time spent together or, or, or you know, in the, the stories we can tell or, or, or even just sort of, you know, do I have someone to tell and, and share secrets with? But do I have somebody who is willing to suffer with me and forgive me? 
and, and to be a part of the church means that that yes, yes, you do. Um, because that's that's the part that that actually endures to it to a greater degree. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like like you said, we're not looking for other people to be our Jesus. We're just looking for people who will walk this crazy thing called life with us as our brothers and sisters, like we're all baptized into Christ. We're all baptized into that body. And even if you are lonely, you're never truly alone. And that's so comforting. Right. And it's it's one of those things too that that is important to talk about because the older you get, the harder it is to make friends. Um, and, and so the world would kind of talk about this and, and say, you know, friends are, are, are developed most frequently when there is, is shared time shared experience and shared trial. Um, so like you think about a second grader and like you're together all day long in school and um, you have the same shared experiences because everybody either likes Pokemon or princesses. And, and you know, it's, you know, you have a, a lot of the same hobbies. Like there's the, the all the kids who play football at recess. Um, you have the sh same experiences and, and the trials are again, very similar because you all have to worry about a math test and, and you all have to worry about, you know, mom and dad being mad and, and you can relate. And so it seems easier to develop these things, but it's also not quite the same um, because, well, again, um, I'm glad that there are people who, who I have trauma bonded with and that's, that's what it is. Uh, but the things that have really made the friendship endure, uh, again, the things that have made the, the friendship special is uh, when looking back, these are people who are unabashedly willing to suffer with me, to be near my suffering and, and to offer forgiveness, to, to never simply judge me by my sins, but always point to mercy. Yeah. And um, along with that, the time experience and trials, it's like, as you go from, you know, being a second mm -hmm. grader to a middle schooler, to a high schooler, to a college student, to an adult, an like, person. you're not that old. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it, everything, like all your experiences get muddled up. Everybody starts getting different experiences yeah. and new experiences. And like when you get into college especially you're not even taking the same classes as your peers like you may have that one class in common and that's the only thing that you guys actually talk about so I'd have friends that were like my math class friends or my theory two friends or whatever but we never really talked outside of that because that's kind of where we met and that was our shared time and experience but we trial. never really share yeah well yeah oh my goodness if you've ever taken a music <laughs> theory if you've ever taken a music theory test you will know and um yeah it's hard math test too science everything it's hard um right so yeah stuff sort of past that and outside of that one of the the wonderful things then is the friends that are our friends are again even all these years later uh, outside of that trial and experience willing to suffer with you willing to to love and forgive and when we measure this, again, inside of the body of Christ, it, it becomes simpler math. And that, that doesn't just mean like ignore friends, love, love to go into church, but it, it means recognize that when, when we are given the gift of the church, it is not just for the forgiveness of your sins over and over again, but it's to tie you to the saints here on earth because the Lord knows that it's dark down here. And so he, he equips us then with, with each other to, to go together, um, make friends in math class, but also then recognize like if, if math class is done and, and you're you're outside of that shared time and experience and trial, it's okay to sort of say like that that's faded, but there are things that endure. If, if you want to measure everything only by shared time, shared experience and shared trial, when those things shift, you, you're going to feel like you lose friends, even if, even if you haven't, because again, even if these, these people, there are people who even surprisingly enough, you can call up from those classes and, and some will, will not offer that. And, and but some will. And for that, God be praised. Yeah, I was just thinking while you were saying that I have a lot of different experience because I moved from college to college to college. So I didn't, I went to four colleges, y'all. Like it is okay to change colleges. It is okay to change majors, but that's not, that's not the point. Um, I, the point is I have a friend from one of my colleges that we were together for a year and then COVID hit and all that got crazy but I still talk to her and I haven't actually seen her face to face in about a year and a half so just because you're not in the same place as somebody doesn't mean you're any less connected than if you see that person every day 
Right. It's, it's one of the things then that they're like, can you have an online friend? I, I, and this is something that sort of changed the definition is, as uh, friend circles have hypothetically expanded. And uh, you guys are, are, are dodging a lot of these bullets by not having something so evil as Facebook, where you have to sort of measure them in the thousands, because I don't talk to all of them all the time. And I don't talk to, and, and you realize sooner or later, you don't even need a Facebook, man. Like the, the, the 12 people in your life that you want to talk to, if you're very, very blessed, you'll find a way. Um, but you you can you can do this now with texting. You can do this with with FaceTime. You can do this with a hundred other things because the measurement isn't then simply are we still in the same class? But do I have somebody I can I can confess my sins to and and hear that Jesus died for me? Do I have somebody that that I know is willing to endure this world with me? And there the answer the answer is is a joyful yes. Friends are a gift from God. Yeah, and I'm so glad to call you my friend as well, Pastor Goodman. Uh, how do how do you guys do it now? Be like, bad. Like, oh, yeah. I don't know. Right. <laughs> am I am I going to show my age if I do do this? That's one? the new one. All right, <laughs> you're my friend too, Paige. All right, hey, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for having me. See you later.